interpreting IR scans for experiment 3, the oxidation of cyclohexene. So here's the structure of cyclohexene. Disodium adipate is the intermediate. We did not isolate this. It was water soluble. We acidified it and in fact converted it to adipic acid, which we recovered. So these are the two compounds we want to be identifying in this lab. So you must make assignments for the major characteristic absorption bands of the reagent cyclohexene and the recovered product adipic acid, not the intermediate adipate ion. Now let's briefly review the four steps involved in interpreting an IR scan. Step number one, we want to look at the structure of the molecule and write down every kind of functional group in the molecule. Step number two is you want to find the generic scan for the same type of compound. It's somewhere between pages 105 and 115. And then you want to review the wave number, the shape, and the type of vibration for the absorption bands identified in the generic scan. Step number three, you want to go to the assignment tables, somewhere between pages 116 and 131. After you find the correct type of compound, identify every absorption that normally occurs for each of the functional groups that you've identified in steps 1 and 2. Note the wave number, that's where it occurs, and the type of vibration that is occurring. And finally, step 4, you're ready to go to the IR scan. Locate the absorptions that you identified in step 2 and 3. Write down all these assignments in the correct boxes on the IR scan. And please be sure to write the wave number that is listed on the assignment table, not the actual value that's printed on the scan. So here is the scan of cyclohexene. And step number one is for us to identify all the functional groups. Well, in fact, you identify four consecutive methylene groups, an internal cisalkene, and that's all no methyl groups. Now, now, how do I know this? Well, first of all, look at the scan. I've made a little bigger copy here. It's easier to see. So count with me one, two, three, four consecutive methylene groups. Notice there are no methyl groups present. And then we have an internal cis alkene. Now, by internal, we mean that it's not at the end of a chain. In fact, if there's double bond in a ring, it can't be at the end of a chain. It has to be internal. And what about the cis business? Well, we haven't discussed this yet in the notes, but we will soon. There are two types of stereochemistry, or isomers, for alkenes. They can be described as being cis or trans. Now, for this to occur, you have to have both doubly bonded carbons having different substituents on them. So notice the lower carbon has two different substituents, a hydrogen on the right and a carbon on the left. And the same is true for the other, and it must be true for the other carbon, a hydrogen on one side, a carbon on the other, two different substituents. So when this occurs, you'll have either cis or trans stereochemistry. So which will it be? Well, uh, you assign priorities to the substituents. So hydrogen has lower atomic number than carbon, and therefore it has a lower priority carbon has the higher priority. Likewise, on the other doubly bonded carbon, carbon has the higher priority, hydrogen has the lower priority. So whenever the higher priority groups, that is the higher atomic number groups, are on the same side of the double bond, that's described as being a cis stereochemistry, in this case a cis alkene. And I've drawn here for comparison uh, a structure of one bromocyclohexene. This, in fact, ha is a trans stereochemistry or a trans isomer. Again, both doubly bonded carbons have two different substituents on them, a hydrogen and a carbon on this one. The, the upper carbon also has two different substituents, a bromine and a carbon. Now, what are the priorities? Well, bromine is higher priority. It has higher atomic number than carbon, so the higher priority group is on the right, on the upper carbon. On the lower carbon, the carbon on the left is higher priority, higher atomic number. And so when we have the higher atomic number groups, the higher priority groups on the opposite sides of a double bond, that's described as being a trans alkene. And it makes a difference in infrared interpretation. There are differences. So now you're 
aware of how to identify them. Step number two is the typical absorptions of methylene groups are found on page 105 in the scan of a simple alkane. Now why would I have the methylene absorptions on the scan of an alkane when in fact we're looking at a, an alkene? The reason is the absorptions of both methylene and methyl groups are only written once on the generic scans. Uh, the first scan was that of an alkane, and they're the same on all the other scans. So rather than put them on all the scans and clutter them and be redundant, I simply have them on the first generic scan of an alkane. So look at where methylene group absorbs. Here there is a symmetric methylene stretch at 2850 and an asymmetric methylene stretch at 2925 both in this region and again you're going to ignore, ignore the asymmetric and symmetric stretches of the methyl group since there is no methyl group in cyclohexene. There is also a symmetric bend of a methylene group at 1470 often referred to as the scissor bend and that would be right here. Now in this scan of hexane, since it also has methyl groups, there's also a methyl asymmetric bend, but again, we don't have that in cyclohexene, so we do not report methyl group activity in cyclohexene. Likewise, you would not report any uh, umbrella bends, the symmetric bends of a methyl group at 1380, because we don't have any methyl groups in cyclohexene. In fact, take a look. Notice here at 1380, check cyclohexene at 12, 13, 80, you see it's absent, not there at all, whereas there is a band at just about 1400, which is there for the uh, symmetric scissor band at 1470, the methylene group. In cyclohexene, we would in fact expect to see the absorption at 720 wave numbers due to four or more methylene groups rocking, and that would be just about there. Now, step 3a, we're going to look at the assignment tables for the methylene groups. Again, we'll be looking at the alkanes table first. Then we'll go back and examine the generic scans of an alkene for the cyclohexene's other absorption bands. On the IR assignment table for paraffins, aliphatic alkanes, on page 116, you're going to find all the absorptions for the methylene group. And again, you want to ignore the methyl group. So here I've crossed out the methyl groups, they're not present, but here are the absorptions for methylene group. And we've already discussed all of these, 2925, 2850 for the asymmetric and symmetric methylene stretches, 1470 for the symmetric scissor bend of the methylene group, and 720 for the four or more rocking methylene groups. Pretty straightforward. Step 2b, let's go back and pick up the alkene part of cyclohexene. So the typical absorptions of alkenes in general are shown on page 105 in the scan of a simple alkene. In this case it's one hexene. Now this particular alkene is for a terminal vinylic alkene. It's terminal, right, and it's vinylic, CH2 double bond CH something, CHR. It's vinylic. However, cyclohexene is not a terminal vinylic. In fact, it's an internal cis alkene. So we need to, there'll be some similarities and there'll be some differences. Now, cyclohexene, our compound, will exhibit the double bond CHR stretch right here, a CHR stretch of an internal cis alkene. And it will be above 3000 wave numbers, but not at 3080. You'll have to check the tables for the exact value. And our alkene will of course also have a carbon to carbon stretch near but not exactly at 1650 because ours is internal cis and so check the tables for that. Now the double bond CH2 bend of a terminal alkene, well that's not going to be in cyclohexene because we don't have a double bond CH2. However, there is a band in this region somewhere which is shown in the tables and we'll look for that next. So step 3b, we're going to go to the assignment tables for alkenes. It's on page 117. Find all the absorptions for an internal cis alkene. Here then is the double bond CHR of an internal 
alkene stretch at 3020 wave numbers. Not at 3080, that's terminal, but rather 3020. Also, the carbon to carbon stretch is not at 1650 for a terminal uh, vinyl alkene, but rather for a cis or trans or tri or tetra substituted internal alkene, we'd have 1670 is what you want to report. And finally, the bands at 910 and 990 that you saw in the scan for one hexene, well, they're not going to be here because we don't have a terminal alkene. We have instead a, an internal cis alkene, so there'd be a single broad absorption somewhere between 730 and 675. So when I have a hyphen between two numbers, it's a single band somewhere in that range. And that's a double uh, bond CH out of plane bend sometimes referred to as an OOPS or OOP out of plane. Alright, so step four, copy the assignments, the wave numbers and the causes into the appropriate boxes on the IR scan. And because it's still only the second lab, I've gone ahead and filled in for you the assignments for the methylene group, the three of them that we identified. And I've left for you to fill in the assignments for the alkene part of it. And there are three of them, including one down in here. That brings us to adipic acid, uh, the product. Now again, we're going to look at the structure, identify what functional groups are present. And again, you see there are four, one, two, three, four methylene groups. There are in fact two carboxylic acid groups, and that is all. Now we've already examined the methylene groups in cyclohexene, so I won't say any more. Those same absorption bands will be in adipic acid, and you should be able to fill them in on this scan. Let's look at a generic scan of an aliphatic carboxylic acid on page 110. So what's an aliphatic mean? Well, aliphatic means non-aromatic. Now, dipic acid has no aromatic groups in it, so it's described as being aliphatic. The word aliphatic literally means fatty, but in practice it means not aromatic. So what do we see for carboxylic acids? Well, around 1710, there's this ginormous carbonyl stretch right here. And I often tease students and say that you need to wear safety glasses when you're look, reading scans of uh, carbonyl compounds. They'll, they'll poke your eye out. It's so obvious you can't miss this band. Um, now, the band may move up or down 10 or 20, 30 nanometers, depending on what's attached to the carbonyl. Electron withdrawing groups, as you'll see, like chlorine and such, will pull it a little higher. Electron donating groups, like aromatic rings and nitrogens, will bring it a little lower. But these are all written in your tables. But the carbonyl band is a very easy band to identify. In addition, we have this very broad hydroxyl band. It's, it's more or less the shape I'm tracing with a pointer here. But from 3300 all the way down to 2500, more or less rounded. Uh, this ragged stuff on the end of it is due to the methyl and methylene stretches that are present in hexanoic acid, but the hydroxyl group itself is rather rounded and broad. Again, very characteristic. Nothing else looks like this stretch other than the hydroxyl group of a carboxylic acid. There are some other significant bands here. There's a CO stretch at about 1420. Mm, hard to find. It's in a congested region. There is also a C to OH bend somewhere in the region of 1300 to 1200. That's rather broad, hard to identify, congested region in here usually. And there's also a broad OH uh, bend about 920. So when you're interpreting the scan of a carboxylic acid, it's like going to a smorgasbord. There's so many things that you could fill up on, but um, I hardly actually pay attention to these. You could think of these as dessert. The main course are these two bands right here, and they're easy to identify. You can't really miss a carboxylic acid unless you're trying. So step three, we go to the assignment table for a carboxylic acid. It's on page 123, and here are the values. Um, an aliphatic carboxylic acid has a carbonyl stretch at 1710. And here are the other four bands we mentioned. For the broad OH band, excuse me, stretch from 3300 to 2500. The, the C to OH stretch at about 1420. The C to OH bend in the region from 1300 to 1200. 
and the OH band at 920. So you can find all of these on your scan and fill them in. And I think all these words are just what I said. So step four, copy the assignments, the wave numbers and copies into the appropriate boxes on this scan. Now just a couple more things before I finish here. Please note that the C to OH stretch at 1420 right here appears as a doublet. Notice it's split at the tip. And note that the C to OH bend in the 1300 to 1200 region is also deeply split. And presumably this is because adipic acid has two carboxylic acid groups on it rather than just one. This is not normal to see that kind of splitting. You should be able to complete the assignments on this scan with what we have done. If you're not sure, go back and review it again. So in addition to interpreting the IR scans of pure starting reagent, cyclohexene, and pure adipic acid, you must also interpret the IR scan of your recovered product. You'll have three scans in total to submit. Now the recovered product should be adipic acid. So in your recovered product, identify the absorption bands arising from adipic acid and look for any residual unreacted reagent, cyclohexene. And I will leave the rest up to you.